Hey everyone, it's Mike Hughes from Lord of Minis, at Lord of Minis on Instagram. Well, here it is, the third and final tutorial on the Broodmother. Be sure to check out the list of paint colors and basing material in the description. If you have been following along since the first tutorial, my hat is off to you and the Broodmother's skin is off to you. What a nasty paper cut she has. We have a number of things we are going to tackle before we cross the finish line. First up are these patches of skin missing. Things are about to get nasty. Speaking of nasty, you might have all seen my previous wet palette. Well, here is the new one. Redgrass Games to the rescue. They sent over this beautiful wet palette. I've used this on a few projects recently. The sponge and the membrane are thicker and the overall quality is outstanding. I highly suggest picking one of these up. First color we're gonna be using here is Deep Red by Scale Color. This is gonna be the first color we use on these patches of skin that are missing. You're gonna see that the color here has a really sort of orange tint to it um, we're going to get kind of gross with this. Uh, we're going to have to, right? Skin missing, gross. Um, so underneath, there's going to be muscle tissue, uh, fat uh, tissue, and uh, obviously it's going to be kind of a bloody mess. So uh, the first color here, you're going to see here, it's more of a mid-tone color, and it might even dry slightly lighter and that's that's fine we want that because we're going to be adding some translucent layers onto this so we got more of the same throughout the body here there are quite a number of patches around the body you can see if you need two coats add two coats uh don't let the gray overwhelm the red so it's looking pretty good Next up, we're gonna create our own wash with these inks, Intense Violet and Pyro Red from Liquitex. These are acrylic inks. I want you guys to get in the habit of creating your own washes. It's just a, a way better practice. We're gonna be mixing this with this AK matte varnish. Always mix your inks with a varnish of some sort. I tend to go with matte because I do other work over the top. But if it's final work and you need a gloss coat, obviously use gloss. So this is sort of what the mixing looks like here. You don't have to use a whole ton of ink. It's just a couple drops each. And then add a few drops of the matte varnish. Add enough of that so that, yeah, so a few drops there. And what we're going to add is airbrush thinner. And what this is going to do is the thinner is actually going to really thin everything up and make it a wash consistency. You can see here what the consistency is like. That's what we're looking for. And we're looking for this sort of purplish color. So this purplish color we're going to use over the top. It's going to be translucent here. And what it's going to do is it's going to fill all the little divots of the wound on the brood mother here in this piece of flesh that's 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 exposed here the skin that's missing you can see that it's just gonna hang in the recesses and when that dries it's gonna give a nice sort of deep color to those recessed areas Now, the amount you apply depends on what you're going for. I tend to want to pull uh, this wash into those the deeper areas here and just let it stay pooled. When it dries, it'll be darker in those areas versus the raised surface areas, which I obviously give a much, much lighter coat to.
Next up is Mahogany Brown by AK Acrylic Colors. What's really nice about this color is that it has a bit of an orange tint to it. I use this a lot on a, quite a lot of things, including gold non-metallic metals, leather work, and the like. It really bridges brown colors and red colors. So we're going to paint the, the, the raised areas here that might resemble fat layers. This is what it ends up looking like here. It's a pretty good first pass on those raised surfaces. Next up, we're gonna use Orange Brown by AK. This is gonna act as our highlights for the fat layers. So we're gonna go over those same raised surfaces, but we're just gonna add some, some highlights in. So this is what it should look like here afterwards and all the little patches. We painted all the raised surfaces, have some decent mid-tone highlighting. We're going to move on to this Alizarin, Alizarin Crimson Hue by Golden. I can never pronounce that. Um, this is a technical paint. It's very liquidy and glossy. It's a great analog for blood and blood effects. The really nice thing about this technical paint is that as we paint over those raised surfaces in those highlighted areas, it's going to kind of blend the red into those areas. So it's going to it's going to force those highlights into our darker orange, which is kind of nice, and then bridge the two. Not to mention it's going to make the wound look fresh and disgusting. The next paint we're going to use is Luminous Green by AK. The Broodmother spits and throws around and secretes this toxic green ooze. And so what we're going to do is we're going to give the appearance that this toxic ooze is literally coming out of some of the deeper areas in her wounds all across her body. So this is what it should look like in the middle and on the sides. And it's totally subjective where you want to put those. It's pretty, pretty disgusting. But that's what we're going for here. We're going to add some of that crimson hue as a bridge to some of those areas that we just painted with the luminous green. Just the parts where it's kind of coming out. We're going to paint over and again what that's going to do is it's going to bridge the red with the luminous green to make it really look like that ooze is coming from some sort of deep area underneath. It's going to kind of shade it more or less in an orange. This is what it should look like here. As you can see, it really looks like it's starting to come from deep within the body there coming out. Next up, we're going to start working on our base and we're going to use this stuff called Green Stuff by Army Painter. It's a two part epoxy clay that you're going to mix together and we're going to use this to form these little acid puddles on the base. 
You don't need a ton for this, so we're just gonna chop this into three segments in order to create our little puddles. And the way this green stuff stuff works is you just need to merge the two colors together, the yellow and the blue, and it makes this really stiff green putty. This is what it should look like in terms of the green color. We're just gonna roll it up into a ball and flatten out the edges. This stuff is fairly sticky. You can glue it down if you want. I don't tend to, it really sticks quite nicely to the base if you press it down. So I'm going to press it in and with my fingers kind of smooth out the ends so that they work within the contours of the base i'm actually going to use some some sculpting tools as well these are some wax sculpting tools that i have available in my workshop here but you can pretty much use anything to to smush down those those edges. So I've created five little puddles here and these puddles are going to be the ooze coming from her little nipples, I guess, uh, down onto the base. Pretty cool. We'll get to that a little bit later. What you're gonna wanna do is prime this. I'm gonna use a pretty standard white surface primer from Vallejo. You can use any white surface primer. And I'm just going to do a couple very light coats, just as a, a barrier between that putty and the paint. Next up, we're going to tackle our OSL on the Broodmother. We're going to use this luminous green and we're going to use our thinner. I fill half the cup or close to with thinner and only put about four, three or four drops of this luminous green in. You can see the consistency is very thin. And then what I do is I use a very low pressure on my airbrush and you'll see the color up here. You can kind of see my airbrush on the bottom there. But I am airbrushing this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to airbrush from the bottom left corner while leaving some of that really nice pink flesh color to the right side and right upper side. This is the object source lighting coming from the ooze on the ground there. We're going to spray the tail. So... In the end, we're going to spray the belly, an area of the belly, the up along the tail. We're going to then go in and spray the interior of the, the hands. But before we get to the hands, I'm just going to go back to the belly here just to make sure that it's bright enough. And it's, again, I'm, I'm applying this a little by little. I'm going to go into the hand now. You can see here. And just spray a little bit. You can see it going on just a little bit in there. The further the, the light source is away from the place where the OSL is going to be put, uh, the darker the OSL. So I'm just going to do these hands a little bit on the underside. And then I'll probably go maybe even underneath the chin area. So let's, let's go in there a little bit. No one will probably even see that, but we'll just do a little bit under, under there. Next up, I'm going to use Light Library Green by Vallejo. And this is a relatively intense fluorescent 
yellow, yellow green. I'm just going to add a little bit to pump up that OSL on the belly area, just a little bit in the lower left hand corner. So this is our OSL. This is what it should look like. You can see it's in the lower left region of her belly and on her tail. A little bit on the feet and on the hands and under her chin. Remember when you apply that, just apply in thin coats little by little and you'll get there. Next up, we're going to take Off White by AK. You can use white. We just need to paint this puddle white so that when we apply the very bright greens and yellows that it'll really be intense and true to the color. While that dries, we're going to move on to this Grim Brown and we're going to apply this to the base. We're just going to actually paint the entire base creeping in towards the the puddle area there the edges of the puddle and we're going to cover our whole base with that So this is what it should look like after the Grim Brown is applied to the base. Next up, we're just going to put some refractive green into the mix here on the base. We're just going to put it over some of the branches and incorporate it. You're going to see that some of the Grim Brown is wet. I'm doing a little bit of wet blending here and we're going to actually do a lot more wet blending. Boy, this has got to get back in focus. Here we go. So you're going to see a lot of me going back and forth between browns and greens uh, for the base. It doesn't need to be insanely precise as we're going to use base materials to cover some of this stuff. But we just want to get a nice variation of greens and browns that kind of sort of resemble a swamp like a swamp like uh, base. We're going to move on to our light livery green. I happen to have this the air uh, version of this, but you can use the regular version. I would use the regular version if I if I had it. This is going to be our first coat over the the pile of ooze here. What we're going to do is we're going to work from the light the lightest coat down to the darkest. The lightest being on top. So this is what the first coat should look like. And if you can't get it in one coat, obviously do two coats. And we're going to work from the top down now. So the lightest that light, 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 bright coat is going to be revealed on the top. And as we get lower, it's going to get darker in color all the way to a darker green. Next up is Frog Green by AK. We're going to leave the tops of this alone and we're going to sort of wet blend from the bottom upwards and you're going to see we're just going to leave sort of the top exposed. We're going to move on to light green by AK and we're going to do the same thing. And again, we're wet blending this, which means we're not letting 
all of the paint dry, we're letting it incorporate into one another as we paint. This is sort of what we have so far. You can see where this is headed and how the OSL is sort of working with this. It's not blended perfectly yet. So we're moving on to Lizard Green by AK. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna add this darker green around the bottom edges of the ooze. This wet blending technique won't be super precise at first, so don't worry about that. We're going to use a thin, thin version here of our light livery green, and we're going to go and kind of put little puddles on the top. Again, this is wet blending, so everything is still wet, and what you're trying to do is you're just trying to get everything to sort of blend from light to dark from the top down. So this is where it's at so far. And as we move forward, we'll just keep working on wet blending those transitions from the top down on that puddle. Next up, we're going to tackle some of the skulls on the base. We're going to use German Field Gray by AK, and we're going to use a dry brush. I would technically go and paint every single one of these skulls, but there are a lot of them. So we're going to start with a dry brush. And we're just going to hit the tops of them so that a lot of the detail starts popping out. You could even use this German Field Gray to dry brush some of the, the vines and whatnot. It seems to work pretty well for this base. We're gonna move on to Green Gray by AK, and we're gonna hit the tops of these skulls again and Let's see if we can get that in focus. You can see how that's looking. Now, again, you can go in now and paint after we apply the dry brush of the green gray. You can go in and paint all of these skulls individually if you would like, working up to um, a mix of green gray and an off white. But for today, we're going to dry brush these. This is what the overall piece is starting to look like. You can see the skulls are beginning to pop a bit more, which is great. And if we take a step back here, we can take a look at how everything's working. The face, the OSL. Everything seems to be working pretty well together. We're going to move on to the base colors, and we don't have to be incredibly accurate. I'm going to use Ranax Hide from Citadel, some brownish green from AK, refractive green from Vallejo, and I'm going to mix these on the base, starting with Ranax Hide. I'm just going to go along the dirt areas and paint that. Let's see if we can try to get this back to focus. Sorry guys, this is this autofocus is a little hairy. There we go. You can kind of see I'm putting the Ronox hide in there. If you have browns and greens laying around, you do not have to use these three colors. You can use whichever sort of muddy, swampy brown and green you have. We're just going to kind of be mixing all these colors to give it this sort of gross ground effect. Here I'm adding some of the 
some of the refractive green in. I'm going in really thin layers as well, just sort of blending all the browns and greens together. What we're going to end up doing after this is we're going to use some basing materials. So we're going to be putting plants and stuff over some of this to create a, a marsh like effect on the base. You can see that I'm mixing some of the refractive green with the edges of the ooze to merge the ooze with the ground color. Next up, we're going to be creating the saliva and the green ooze. We're going to be using Uhu glue. We're not going to use the water-based Uhu glue. We're going to use the original Uhu glue. And before you use the Uhu glue, we're going to use a gloss varnish between the connections of where we're placing this glue. So we're going to take the Vallejo gloss varnish and we're just going to paint that onto the, the teeth. I'll even put some on the tongue just as an effect. The way this works is the gloss varnish anchors the points of the Uhu glue when you apply it. So the other areas that we're going to apply that varnish to are going to be those nipples on her belly, as well as the ooze. And I did take a little bit more time to wet blend that ooze so that the painting is more even. Here's the Uhu glue. You're going to want to put this on a disposable something. I'm putting it on the bottom of a cup here. And you're going to want to take a stick or something thin to grab it. It's very sticky. You're going to see that it creates these threads. So it's really perfect for things like saliva, if you mix it with a red ink, blood. Um, there's quite a lot of different things you can do with this. We're going to put a little ball on the end of this little brass rod that I have left over here. Again, you can use a toothpick for this, probably better than a brass rod. So there it is. And what we're going to do now is we're going to connect the points of the teeth. I tend to like to put a little bit more saliva towards the backs of the teeth where probably more saliva would be. But you can see this is 
this can be sort of not insanely accurate so you're gonna have to play around with it a little bit but it's got a really nice effect once you get those strands connected there you can see it looks like saliva So we're going to work on the other side here. I think I'm going to try to put a little bit more on, especially on the back side of the mouth. You can see when it separates like that, it's no big deal. You can just grab it again and reattach it. So here's a pretty big web of saliva. That looks pretty gross. Work on attaching some of these a little better. So looking pretty cool. This is what we have now for the saliva. Also a fantastic reminder to be up to date on your rabies shots. Next up, we're gonna use this Luminous Lemon Color Acrylic Ink by Holbein with Uhu glue. And we're gonna start by putting just a couple of drops of this into a cup. You don't need much, okay? About that much. And we're gonna take our Uhu glue and we're just gonna put just a bit in there. About that much. I'm gonna close that up so it doesn't get everywhere. It's pretty sticky. And we're gonna mix the ink in the Uhu glue together. This tends to work a little bit better with the less ink you use. So, you know, even two to three drops of this ink would have been fine. We're gonna take this now and we're going to attach it from the nipples onto the toxic ooze on the base. So this is what I have done here. I've done three of the nipples there. It's pretty, pretty gross. Kind of cool looking. You can do as many of these as you want. You could do all the nipples, two, none. Um, go from the top one down. But this is what I've done for today. And that's what it should look like. So I have all of these basing materials, these shrubs and leaves and foliage. I've got some from Woodland, Woodland Scenics um, and from Army Painter. These things generally have an adhesive to the bottom of them. I'll put a number of these in the description for this video. I'm probably just going to use a couple different variations of these for today, but you can go as crazy as you want building out your base with all this in terms of foliage, leaves, and all that. I, speaking of leaves, I have some really great AK oak and maple leaves, these, these dead leaves. I'll show you. They're really small. They look real. They're really great. And I'll show you how to apply these because they apply a bit differently than the ones with the self-adhesive. So I tend to start with the, the bigger pieces of grass and foliage and then work my way down to the smaller pieces 
So this is, again, slightly out of focus. I'm just placing this in the back so you can see it's not in the way of the ooze. I'll take these grass tufts here. Again, these have adhesive on the back, and I'll just sort of place them around the base. And what I typically do with these is I put them sort of in the cracks between things. I have this basing glue from Army Painter that I mix with water and make it very, very liquidy. Need a little bit more glue. This glue is just white glue. It's just regular white glue. So if you just have regular white glue around, like an Elmer's white glue, that'll work fine with water. So you really want to mix this so it's very watery, but still has some glue mixed in there. What we do with this is we take things like these small little leaves, grab them with a set of tweezers like that. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of dunk the leaf into that watery glue texture. Now, what's great about this, you're going to see there's just a little bit on the back. What's great about this is that this glue dries completely transparent. So whenever you use this white glue, to glue anything down, just keep in mind that that if there's some of the white glue showing, it's just going to it's going to go away once it dries. So, I've put a bunch of leaves around, a bunch of tufts around, and this is what it's looking like. It's looking pretty great. Um, again, you can add as much as you want. I've got some paint missing there. I'm going to have to repaint the edges, no big deal. But you can see how the OSL is working, how the plants are working. It's looking pretty good. For the final thing here, I'm going to mix Off-White and Gray-Green by AK. I'm going to mix these together and just do some subtle highlighting around the face and on some of the fur texture. This is the very, very last step in painting our miniature and really is sort of the last step in painting any miniature is just to do some final highlighting and you can do as much as you need to throughout the entire mini. But for today, right now, I'm just going to go through the face area and on some of that fur on the tops and sides. This same color can be applied as a highlight to all these little bone textures coming up off the top. Um, her, her nails, you can see we need to sort of touch up those, some parts on the teeth, 
So it's a really nice highlight color for a number of different areas around this particular miniature. So the one thing I noticed is all this fur texture. It's a very sort of generic fur texture that's going on on this miniature. What I wanna do is I wanna take that same color we just worked with for the highlights and apply it to a dry brush, taking most of that paint off onto a, a paper towel, and then just going over some of the raised surfaces of that texture. I would normally paint individual hairs on a hair texture but this is there's just there's just so much of it and it, it kind of has this interesting quality to it or it's not really applied and it doesn't really look sculpted in strands it's more of a it's more of a real texture so I'm just gonna apply this dry brush across some of that on the top where the light is coming down and hitting the top. So we applied those highlights throughout the top of the head. Everything is looking pretty good. We are at the end of this tutorial. All we need to do now is check our miniature to make sure the highlights are in all the right places and everything is working together. That's the end of the Broodmother tutorial. I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to watch these. And an even bigger thank you for the people who are painting with me. I'll see you all again soon. Cheers.